All right, well, thanks very much. Um, as Bruce said, this is a bit of an experiment. So uh, when, we, when Bruce and I were first talking about doing, bringing the conference to the University of Montana, I said, well, can we do a survey of Montanans? And Bruce said, that's, that's a strange idea. Tell me more. So we uh, had uh, extensive dialogue about why this might be a good idea. And um, I think Bruce and my discussions reflect that uh, the role of public opinion in policy discussions is not always very clear. And more often than not, the role of public opinion is either not discussed explicitly or simply is not uh, at the table, per se, um, in discussions about public policy. So when Bruce described the conference and I looked at uh, what the conference was about and I looked at previous conference programs, I realized this had to be focused on uh, what the conference was about and about policy. So the, um, the f development of the poll uh, involved really two fa three phases, getting Bruce's buy-in, uh, then the fundraising, and I've thanked many of the UM people and the Lane Center for the financing of the poll, and then figuring out what should be in it. And so we designed the poll so that it would be very focused on what the um, what the uh, <coughs> panels were about at the conference. Um, so why do we want to do this? Why do we want to do a poll in the first place? Well, we don't have a very good handle nationally, and especially in Montana, on what the main issues are. We also don't have very good polling on rural issues. Uh, I did an extensive search and did not find much in the way of interest in the survey research community uh, and what's going on in rural areas and uh, some in the West, but not very much interest in what's going on uh, in the West, in rural areas. Um, as I said, we wanted to focus on the panel topics here to provide uh, at least some framework or connection that panelists could draw on if they chose to. Um, Montana is a great place to do a rural west survey because we are west. We are entirely west, um, I think, by the 100th meridian definition, um, or at least largely. Um, we do have the highest proportion of rural residents uh, in the west. Uh, as David Kennedy said in his speech last night, there are multiple definitions of rural but by the census definition, uh, and this comes as a surprise to many who say, well, what about Nevada? What about Wyoming? Well, Wyoming's population is concentrated in a few cities. Nevada obviously, obviously has Las Vegas and Reno. This is the most rural state because we have a small number of medium-sized cities and the rest of the million people who live in Montana are dispersed throughout the state. So we have a very large rural and very large small town population. We also have a fairly low uh, median income, which means that the rural problems that we do have and that are exacerbated by the distances involved in rural policy delivery are legion in Montana. So we have stories of people driving 500 miles to see a specialist. And I, have a, I had a student who I was working with on a project and they were driving home for the weekend. And I said, well, why are you leaving on Thursday? which is not an uncommon problem for faculty to encounter with students, but when she said, well, my house is 12 hours away from Missoula, and she's a Montana resident, I realized that this, this is a pretty big state with, um, with pretty big service delivery issues. We also have the fifth largest proportion of Native Americans, and if you um, take the west of the 100th meridian definition seriously, we have the second largest proportion of Native Americans in the Rocky Mountain and Pacific region. So to the extent that issues related to tribal rights and sovereignty are important throughout the, the west, um, this is, Montana is a good place to look at a number of these uh, issues. Uh, the survey was conducted, um, as I said, um, thanks to a large amount of fundraising. Um, this is done by telephone. Phone surveys are becoming more expensive. Internet surveys really are the wave of the future, uh, but we're really in a transition phase. The interviews were done uh, during February, which is a terrible month to interview. You cannot interview uh, effectively during Valentine's Day or President's Day weekend and the Super Bowl. Forget it. But they managed, they managed to get almost 1,000 interviews uh, through a, a sample that was based on cell phones, random digit dialing, and listed landlines. Uh, the, Surveys were conducted expertly by the Social and Economic Sciences Research Center at Washington State University. I know we have some Washington State alumna and faculty here. Uh, they did a great job. Um, and the survey results I'm presenting are weighted to reflect the demographics of the Montana population. The framework uh, was that we had five sections. Uh, first, a brief 
tour of Montana's health, Montana's qualities and leaders. Then the healthcare and access uh, panel. Uh, we have a few, several questions: natural resources and public lands, tribal land and law and policy, and rural homelessness. So, uh, since we have limited time and I have a huge amount of data, I'm not going to bore you and uh, murder you with uh, PowerPoint or bore, or put you to sleep with PowerPoints. So I will skip through some of this data. Um, but when we look at Montana's, Montanans' overall views of the state and its qualities and leaders, we notice a couple of fundamental tensions. If we ask people what do they value most highly about living in the state, almost half, 49%, say they value nature and a clean environment. So this is far and away the most important things to Montana. When we turn the question around and ask, well, what is the biggest issue facing Montana? The answer is totally different. Protecting the environment ranks about the fourth or fifth um, it's about 11% of the population. What people really are concerned about are jobs and economic growth. The combined 37% say that those are their principal concerns when it comes to the issues that Montana has to deal with. When we ask Montanans if they think things are going well or badly, uh, they're very optimistic. 64% say things are going well uh, on the right track. Their evaluation of, the, of their leaders is generally very positive. We asked about our four, uh, four of our statewide office holders Governor Bullock, who you will hear speak at lunch today, uh, our two senators, John Tester and Steve Daines, and our freshman congressman, Ryan Zinke. All of them had job approval ratings in the 61 to 75 percent range, which I think if Governor Bullock knows this, uh, he'll be very happy. Um, and uh, Montanans have had, uh, we're a poor state, but we've had a strange situation in the last two budgeting cycles where we've had a surplus, um, eat your heart out, heart out Californians, um, and the big challenge has been, what do we do with it? And there's been a large debate over, should this money be returned to the state taxpayers in the form of tax cuts or permanent tax reductions, or should it be used to uh, finance programs in the state? And by an overwhelming margin, uh, people support taking, putting the surplus into uh, programs, additional <coughs> programs by almost a two to one margin. One of the things I'll do in this presentation is try to highlight where we do have substantial differences between the rural population and the urban population, self-defined. And so people who define themselves as living in rural areas, living in small towns, and living in urban areas, uh, I'll talk about the differences in opinion there. Rural residents value jobs more and the environment less, and we'll see this to some extent in the re responses on the natural resource questions, and they're less optimistic and have less faith in the state government to spend their money wisely. When we turn to health care and access, uh, most, pe most people in Montana have coverage, or at least they say they do. This is 89%. This is actually higher than probably what the reality is. I think, Tom, you probably know the statistics here much better than I do. Uh, but um, the, <clears throat> this probably reflects the, the fact that people who don't have health care are harder to reach they are less likely to have a landline, less likely to have a cell phone, so they are probably somewhat underrepresented in our sample. Even though we have 89% of the people with some form of health care or health coverage or health insurance, 17% of them did not see a doctor uh, in the last year due to cost, due to the single issue of cost. 24% of them delayed health care due to a reason other than cost, involving a variety of things like distance, um, difficulty getting an appointment, and one of the challenges in rural health care is not just the distances, but are there doctors at all in an area, uh, rural area of the state? Um, the problems are much worse in the small towns. Almost half of the people there reported either delaying or not getting medical care, and much less of a problem in the cities where about a third of the people reported some problem. When we turn to policy related to health care, we see that the ACA, Obamacare, whatever you want to call it, and we did not uh, call it Obamacare, is viewed unfavorably by over a two to one margin, 64 to 31%. Rural residents very opposed, but even a majority of urban residents are unfavorable towards uh, the um, ACA. This was primarily driven by partisanship, um, but not entirely, even a plurality of Democrats were more unfavorable than favorable uh, towards the ACA. However, Montana t was one of the states that took a somewhat unique approach, uh, expanding Medicaid uh, through the offer that was under 
the, made to states under the <coughs> Affordable Care Act, and that is uh, extremely um, favorable. Um, the question that we posed due to the limited amount of time we had was based on the debate that occurred in Montana about the Medicaid expansion. And so the options respondents had were, do you favor the expansion, do you oppose the expansion, or do you favor extending Medicaid to all Montanans? And 36% favored <coughs> the expansion, and an additional 27% wanted all Montanans to be covered. Uh, most rural residents favored either expansion or rural coverage, and an overwhelming number of uh, urban residents did. Um, disability issues are really important in Montana in part because a large proportion of the disabled population is in rural areas, as Tom and Christian, two of our presenters at the panel tomorrow, will uh, discuss. 73% um, of Montanans viewed the opportunities for disabled people in their communities as very positively. Um, credit went to people in the community, blame went to government at one or another level. The most serious problem uh, in Montana, according to many people, is meth abuse. 42% of Montanans said it was extremely serious. <coughs> Another 39% said it was very serious, worse in rural and small town areas. But how to deal with meth? There's no agreement on the appropriate policy response. As you can see, education, strong, stiffer penalties against dealers, treatment and rehabilitation, law enforcement, um, all garner between 10 and 10% uh, and a third of support. So there's no agreement on what to do, do about the meth epidemic. And I've been here in the state since 2004, and meth ep epidemic is periodically a problem that resurfaces here in Montana, as I'm sure it does in your states. When we look at natural resource and policy, the, um, there are a number of divisions that emerge. This is probably the most evenly divided area in terms of policy that we looked at in the survey. Um, the divisions aren't necessarily very um, polarized, except on a few issues. Um, so there are a lot of people sort of in the middle on these issues, and the, part, the divides are fairly equal. Nonetheless, there are still substantial differences, which if you think about public opinion <laughs> as a guide to policy, if public opinion is divided, that's not much of a guide for policy. And that's really what we see in the natural resource area. In fact, we see a lot of complex views or uh, mutually uh, contradictory views. Uh, there's a bit of the something for nothing. People want simultaneously uh, both development and uh, protection of natural resources. Montanans take climate change very seriously. Uh, Glacier National Park uh, should be renamed Glaciated National Park because by 2030 <coughs> all the glaciers are pr projected to have gone even though the glaciated features of the landscape will remain. Um, concerns about, about uh, climate change are bigger in, larger in urban than rural areas. When we ask people about the tra trade-off between environment and development, um, natural resource development emerges as the winner, but not by a large margin. 58% think there's not enough resource development. 57% disagree that past <coughs> and current mining, timber, and other industries have caused too much environmental damage. 56% uh, believe that environmental laws are too strict currently and inhibit development. And the urban-rural splits on these issues are quite substantial, 16 to 20%, all statistically significant. Looking at lands policy, uh, this is one of the, uh, <coughs> Bruce's interests was to make sure that we did cover lands policy, very prescient since uh, between the time that we finished the survey preparation and it went into the field, um, some obscure wildlife refuge in Oregon became really notable in the news. Um, and some of the survey results here are surprising. Uh, I've looked at previous surveys, and in uh, most of them in, throughout the West, uh, there are no states where there's a majority support for federal lands transfer, but we did find that here, and we're not sure how much of that is due to the increased visibility on the issue due to the Maller uh, occupation um, and how much is due to differences in question wording. But here we found in our survey uh, support for the transfer of federal lands, 59% overall. Uh, when we asked specifically about the political actions of the uh, Maller occupation, 45% of respondents thought they should be arrested, 37% <coughs> thought they should be supported, and this is the most polarized opinion in the entire survey. 64% of people who offered an opinion on this question, 
strongly held that opinion as opposed to somewhat uh, holding that opinion. So this is by far the most polarizing issue, and so I don't expect it to go away in the state of Montana, especially as we have some elected officials who are, uh, and legislation that's been introduced in our state legislature in each of the last two sessions to uh, pressure the federal government to turn over state lands, or federal lands to the state. What would happen to those lands if they were transferred to the state? Well, it's not quite clear. Uh, how should federal lands be managed? 36% want la uh, the land and wildlife to be protected. 23% would support development, but only in terms of farming and ranching. Another 17% want an increase in recreational opportunities, uh, which may mean motorized or may mean non-motorized recreation. And then in terms of oil, gas, and mining development on federal lands, there's very low support, only 10%. So development gains about 33%, third of support. Uh, protection uh, or recreation gains slightly more than majority support uh, for what to do with those federal lands, whether they're managed by the federal government or the state. In terms of energy development, um, people, when asked uh, whether the federal and state policies should favor uh, energy development, most people opted for both, uh, a little bit of uh, wanting everything. And uh, both oil, gas, coal, and wind, and re solar and renewables. Um, renewables were preferred to fossil fuels among those who chose one over the other. Um, and there's a big urban-rural split, even though most of the uh, fossil fuel development obviously takes place in rural areas, that's where the support was the strongest. Uh, Montana has been uh, very affected by the recent carbon rules issued by the EPA. Uh, the draft rules were not very draconian from Montana's perspective. Uh, the most recent rules, much more serious, will probably result in relatively uh, quick shutdown of uh, two or possibly more of the four coal burning plants that we have in the state. And so this is a very hot issue and was during the period of the survey. Most people believe the state should produce its own plan and propose that to the EPA as uh, our way to, of dealing with uh, meet, meeting the carbon goals. Um, there's been a large talk of suing the federal government. In fact, we, the state, I believe, has filed a lawsuit against the federal government, but that only gained 17% support among this survey. And uh, an additional 13% are willing to allow the federal government's plan, which would definitely shut down some coal production and definitely coal generation. Uh, to, uh, to cease. Fracking, opinion is divided perfectly down the middle at 47%. Uh, there's more support, slightly more support in rural areas than in urban. Tribal law and policy uh, was an area that was uh, somewhat vexing. Uh, when I looked at the data, I wasn't sure if I was seeing it correctly, and I spoke to Mani about this, and uh, Mani has, and I have some interesting ideas about why this might be. Uh, Monty Mills of the Law School will be presenting at the uh, uh, panel later today. Um, sovereignty is viewed, tribal sovereignty is viewed extremely negatively. Almost two-thirds of Montanans view it in a negative light. But if you ask them questions that relate to how sovereignty policy is manifest in uh, natural resources and lands, they are phenomenally supportive of the tribes. So recently a state uh, water compact was passed uh, with the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes. This is the tri these, these are the tribes who uh, are on the Flathead Reservation just north of Missoula by about a half hour. Um, it was controversial when it passed, but almost two-thirds of Montanans approve of the state compact that was just passed uh, less than a year ago in the state legislature. Uh, Kerr Dam, which controls the water flow out of the Flathead Lake, the largest freshwater lake in the west, uh, which also is uh, just north of Missoula, Beautiful drive on your way to Glacier. I strongly recommend it. Um, that was also very controversial, and in fact, uh, former and current state legislators have sued um, to have that um, transfer annulled, and it was, uh, the suit was uh, turned down. 59% uh, of uh, Montanans supported the tribal, uh, the transfer of the uh, dam to the tribes. And this is in spite of the fact that the tribes uh, decided not to continue the tax uh, payments that were made by the previous owners of the uh, dam to the uh, counties, at least for the time being. Rural residents are less supportive. Um, large majority support tribes using their funds to repurchase ancestral lands, uh, whether for uh, preservation or for natural resource development. 
Uh, coal development on tribal lands is also approved by a large majority. Um, in terms of whether the tribes have the right amount of control over resources and the uh, right balance of resources, um, pluralities or slight majorities uh, believe that the tribes have the right amount and the remainder of the opinion is split on whether they have too little or too much control over resources. And thank you. All right. So Montana has a somewhat unique uh, state policy enshrined in the 1972 state constitution. That is 1972 state constitution that requires uh, that all Montana K through 12 students have some uh, knowledge of and an education in tribal uh, culture and history. Um, a, Majority support for continuing this program at the current levels, 52 percent. Um, an additional 39 percent believe that there should be more coverage of Native American history and culture in the public schools. When asked about opportunities for Native Americans, uh, about 41 percent view they had that they have fewer opportunities than other Montanans. Um, 38 percent about the same. Rural residents and poor residents are seen as having fewer opportunities. Um, than uh, uh, Native Americans. Housing and homelessness. Uh, this was a policy area that did not appear as one of the prime concerns when we asked Montanans what the main issues were that they were concerned about. However, when we asked specifically about homelessness, 27% said it was extremely or they were extremely or very concerned about it. Uh, concerns were higher in urban areas than small towns or rural. 35% um, thought statewide the problem was serious, even if it wasn't so serious in their own communities. 42% of Montanans report personally knowing someone who is or has been homeless in the last two years. Again, higher in cities than urban areas. And there's a sense that the state is sort of stagnating in terms of its ability to deal with the problem. Uh, progress is not uh, substantial on this issue. Why do we have homelessness? There's no agreement on the cause. Uh, lack of access to drug and uh, alcohol treatment, low wages, unemployment, lack of affordable housing. A number of open-ended responses mentioned uh, the responsibility or actions of the individuals themselves. Um, there's um, no agreement on who should be responsible taking care of this issue, whether the state, local, or federal government, um, families of homeless people, churches or nonprofits, there's no consensus, although it does seem clear that the locus of concern focuses on the federal government with about a 55% majority. There is support for some policy alternatives. 61% would support additional government spending on housing, and I think we've discovered an MB issue, uh, a not, not in my backyard. We asked people if they would support citing uh, housing for low-income people and homeless people within a mile of their houses and 70% agreed, which was, I think, for me, possibly the second most shocking finding in the survey. So what do we have? Well, the main conclusions are that the state is fairly optimistic. People have a fair amount of trust in the state government. They want um, the state to have some control, more control over policy, so there is some concerns, some resentment of federal control over public lands. Um, as David showed in his slide last night, uh, there is a very high proportion of public land ownership in Montana, I think third or fourth in the West uh, behind Nevada. There are a lot of intent, inherent tensions, as there are throughout the rural West, in development. And even though Montana, thanks to the presence of a sliver of Yellowstone and all of Glacier National Park in the state, as well as a number of other beautiful public lands that I encourage you to visit, um, there are concerns over the resource um, development in rural areas, uh, resource-based development versus the recreational-based development in rural areas, and those issues are still very much at the forefront of Montana development concerns. We have extreme challenges in health care, uh, problems resolving resource policy conflicts, and uh, dealing with the idea of tri tribal sovereignty and what to do about homelessness. Uh, the apparent contradictions are evident throughout the survey and tensions over potential solutions. So not much guidance to policymakers here except there are a lot of problems and please figure out how to deal with them. <laughs> the next steps. As Bruce said, we uh, did this survey partly to encourage dialogue. We hope people would, at this conference 
we'll engage in dialogue. All the panelists have a summary report that I prepared uh, earlier this week um, that you should have received yesterday. If other conference attendees would like that report, please see me. Um, we'll have a comprehensive report finalized uh, probably early in April, and we'll put that on the uh, Lane Center website. Um, we, I would also like to speak to people who have ideas uh, from either whether you're on a conference panel or not uh, for further analysis of this data um, and uh, ideas for future rural west and western conference surveys. So thank you very much. Sorry to have taken up your time and appreciate your attention. <laughs>